In this video we are going to introduce the important mechanical concepts of impulse and momentum. These are particularly useful when we are dealing with particles colliding. So let's suppose that we've got two particles A and B whose masses are MA and MB respectively and which are moving along the same straight line in such a way that they are going to collide. Suppose, moreover, that the velocities just before the collision are UA and UB. During the collision, there will be sudden changes in the motion of the particles caused by the contact forces between those two particles. Now Newton's third law means that the force that B exerts on A at any time will be equal and opposite to the force that A exerts on B at that time. So during the collision, if B is exerting a force F to the left on A, then A will be exerting an equal but opposite force F, that is a force F acting to the right on B. After a short time, once the collision phase is over, the two particles are moving with their new velocities, VA and VB, respectively. Now, if we assume that the contact force between the two particles during the collision phase is constant, and that this phase lasts for time t seconds, then we can obtain an important result linking the masses and the initial and final velocities of A and B by applying Newton's second law and the constant acceleration equations to each of the particles separately. So let's consider first of all what's happening to particle B. So before the collision Particle B is moving to the right with a velocity of UB. During the collision, Particle B is experiencing a push, a force F, from Particle A hitting into Particle B. And this is going to be producing an acceleration, which we're going to define to be little a of b. And then after the collision, b will be moving with velocity vb. Now, if we apply Newton's second law to the right, then we've got f is the resultant force to the right, must equal the mass of b times the acceleration of b, so that is f must equal mb times AB. Now, immediate, at the beginning of the collision phase, B has velocity UB. At the end of the collision phase, it's got a velocity of VB to the right. And so the constant acceleration equation applied to the t seconds of the collision phase gives us the equation VB equals UB plus AB times t. So that tells us that AB must be equal to VB minus UB all divided by t. If we substitute for AB in equation 1, that now gives me F equals MB times VB minus UB over T, or multiplying each side by T, we get F times T must equal MB times VB minus MB times UB. Now we're going to look at this equation in a little bit more detail. The quantity Ft 
is called the impulse of our constant force F, which acted for the time T. In, since T is a scalar quantity and F is a vector quantity, impulse is a vector quantity and the direction of the impulse is exactly the same as the direction of the force. The units of impulse is the Newton second because impulse is force times time. Force is measured in Newtons, time is measured in seconds. Now, the right-hand side of the equation has two terms, each of which is the mass of B times by the velocity of B. In the first place, it's the mass of B times the final velocity of B, then take away the mass of B times the initial velocity of B. For a particle of mass M, Moving with velocity v, the quantity mass times velocity, so the quantity mv is called the momentum of the particle. m is a scalar quantity, v is a vector quantity, so momentum is also a vector quantity and it has the same direction as the velocity. And the units for momentum are the units of mass times by the units of velocity, so that is a kilogram meters per second. So, looking at equation 3 again, we can think of equation 3 as saying that the impulse acting on B is the final momentum of B minus the initial momentum of B, or equivalently, the impulse is the change in momentum of B during the collision. Moving on a little bit, we'll now consider what happens to A during the collision phase. So we'll let A, little a, A, be the acceleration of particle A during the collision phase. And again, if we apply Newton's second law to the right, then we're going to have the resultant force is minus F, must equal the mass of A times the acceleration of A, so we must have minus F equals MA times the acceleration of A. Using the constant acceleration equations, V equals U plus AT for the particle A. Initially, particle A had a velocity of UA. After the collision, it had a velocity of VA. During the collision, which lasted T, capital T seconds, there was an acceleration of AA. So, constant acceleration equation gives me VA equals UA plus AA times T. Rewriting that to make AA the subject, we've got AA is VA minus UA divided by T. And substituting equation 5 into equation 4, we've got minus F equals MA times VA minus UA divided by T. Multiplying each side by T, we've got minus FT is MA times VA minus MA times UA. So that's going to be our equation 6. So if we now have a look at equation 3, and equation 6 together, we can see that we've got MFT is equal to MBVB minus MBUB and minus FT is equal to MAVA minus MAUA. If we add these two equations together, we get naught 
equals MBVB minus MBUB plus MAVA minus MAUA. And this can be rearranged to give me MAUA plus MBUB equals MAVA plus MBVB. Now MAUA is the initial momentum of A. MBUB is the initial momentum of B. On the right hand side, MAVA is the final momentum of A and MBVB is the final momentum of B. So, the left hand side is the total initial momentum before the collision. The right hand side is the total final momentum after the collision. So, what equation A7 is telling us is that the total momentum just before the collision is the same as the total momentum just after the collision. And this important principle is known as the conservation of the momentum. Now, we've derived the principle of conservation of momentum, making the assumption that the contact force was constant during the collision phase between the two particles and that the impulses from the contact forces were the only impulses acting during the collision phase. The assumption of the constant contact forces during the collision phase is unnecessary but a derivation of the conservation of momentum when the contact forces are not constant is rather more complex. However, the assumption that there are no other impulses acting during the collision phase is essential if the conservation of momentum is to be used. So, conservation of momentum if two particles interact in such a way that no external impulses act upon them, then the total momentum of the system immediately before the interaction or the collision equals the total momentum of the system immediately after the interaction or the collision. When we try to apply the conservation of momentum to collisions and interactions between particles, then it's important that we draw separate before and after collision diagrams and that we make it quite clear which direction the velocities are in these diagrams. We must remember that the conservation of momentum is a vector equation so we must make it clear which direction is being considered the positive direction. So let's have a look at a few examples. So our first example we have a truck of mass 1100 kilograms is moving with 8 meters per second and it collides with a tra truck of mass 1400 kilograms which is moving in the opposite direction to the first truck at a speed of 2 meters per second. If the trucks automatically couple when they collide, what is their speed after the collision? So we need our before diagram showing the two trucks moving towards each other, one moving to the right with speed 8 meters per second and the other moving to the left with speed 2 meters per second. And after the collision, the two trucks are moving off to the right with a velocity of v. So, applying the conservation of momentum, and we'll apply it to the right regarding to the right as being our positive direction. Then the initial momentum of the 1100 kilogram truck is 1100 times 8, and the initial momentum of the 1400 kilogram truck 
is 1400 times minus 2 because it is moving in the negative direction. Our final momentum of the combined coupled truck is going to be 2500, that's the mass of the combined truck, times by its velocity to the right, which is V. So, we've got 6000 must equal 2500 times V, which tells me that V must be 2.4 meters per second. For our second example, we have P and Q are two particles of mass 5 kilograms and m kilograms respectively. They collide head-on when their velocities are 4.8 meters per second and 2 meters per second in opposite directions. After the collision, the velocity of P is 3 meters per second in the same direction as before the collision but the velocity of q is 4 meters per second in the opposite direction to its previous motion. We have to determine the value of m and the magnitude of the impulse acting on q during the collision. So again, we must start by drawing a diagram showing the initial situation. So we have p moving to the right in this case in our diagram at a speed of 4.8 meters per second q moving to the left with a speed of 2 meters per second after the collision we have p moving at 3 meters per second to the right and q moving at 4 meters per second to the right applying the conservation of momentum with to the right as being our positive direction. We have initially, the initial momentum of P is 5 times 4.8 and the initial momentum of Q is M times minus 2. So 5 times 4.8 plus M times minus 2 is the initial momentum of the system. After the collision, the final momentum of P is 5 times 3, and the final momentum of Q is M times 4. So the final momentum of the system is 5 times 3 plus M times 4. So we've got the equation 24 minus 2M equals 15 plus 4M. In other words, we've got 9 equals 6m, so m must be 1.5. So the mass of Q is 1.5 kilograms. Now we want to find also the magnitude of the impulse acting on Q during the collision. So we'll show we'll draw a series of diagrams showing the motion of Q just before the collision, the fact that there is an impulse J acting on Q during the collision, and that just after the collision Q is moving to the right with a speed of 4 meters per second. Now we know that the impulse acting on Q gives us the change in the momentum of Q. And we'll apply that equation using to the right as being our positive direction. So the impulse is J equals the final momentum minus the initial momentum. The final momentum to the right is M times 4. In other words, 1.5 times 4 because we know that m is 1.5. Take away the initial momentum so we've got to take away 1.5 times by minus 2 the initial momentum of 
Q is M, which is 1.5, times its velocity, which is minus is 2 meters per second to the left. In other words, we've got a velocity of minus 2 to the right. So we've got J equals 1.5 times 4, take away 1.5 times minus 2, which gives me J is 9 newton seconds. For our next example, we have a truck of mass 800 kilograms, runs into a wall with speed 7 meters per second, and rebounds with speed 2.2 meters per second. We have to find the impulse acting on the truck during the impact, and we need to state two assumptions that have been made in answering the question. So again, we'll start off by drawing some diagrams. Before the impact, the truck is moving towards the wall at 7 meters per second. Whilst the truck is in contact with the wall, it will be receiving a impulse to the left from the wall. And after the impact, we know that the truck is rebounding at 2.2 meters per second. So we can apply impulse equals change of momentum. This time we'll apply the equation with to the left as being our positive direction, mainly because j is to the left and the final momentum is to the left. So we've got j, the impulse, is the final momentum minus the initial momentum. Regarding to the left as being the positive direction, the final momentum is 800 times by 2.2. The initial momentum of the truck is 800 times minus 7. So our equation J equals final momentum minus initial momentum reads as J equals 800 times 2.2 minus 800 times minus 7. which means that J is 7,360 newton seconds. Now, what assumptions have we made here? Well, we've certainly assumed that the wall is vertical, so that the impulse is horizontal. It's at right angles to the wall. We've assumed that the wall is fixed, so it doesn't move after the impact. Our next example, we have a truck C of mass 1500 kilograms, moving at 4 meters per second, collides head on with a stationary truck D. After the collision, the speed of D is 3 meters per second, and the speed of C is 0.8 meters per second. Determine the, two, the possible values of the mass of the truck D. And notice here that the question says determine the possible values, which suggests that there's more than one value that we're chasing after. Right, so we'll start by drawing our before diagram. Now, we need to give a little thought to the after diagram. Before the collision, the total momentum before the collision is to the right. We've got 1500 times 4 plus m times 0. So we've certainly got a net total momentum before the collision to the right. The conservation of momentum tells us the momentum after the collision, therefore, must also be to the right. And that means that at least one of the trucks must be moving to the right. Now, C moving to the right and D moving to the left is impossible because that would mean that C had to physically pass through truck D and that just can't happen. 
So we can certainly be certain that D moves to the right. However, C could move to the left or to the right. And we're going to start off by assuming that C moves to the right. So if we say that C moves to the right after the collision, then our after diagram looks like this. So our conservation of momentum equation gives me 1500 times 4 plus m times naught is my initial momentum equals the final momentum which is going to be 1500 times 0 0.8 plus m times 3. So we've got 6000 equals 1200 plus 3m which means we've got 4800 equals 3m so m is 1600 and the mass of D is 1600 kilograms. However, we've got also got to suppose that after the collision truck C moves instead of to the right with speed 0.8 meters per second that it moves with speed 0.8 meters per second to the left. So our before diagram is exactly the same as before our after diagram shows C moving to the left with speed 0.8 meters per second. So applying the conservation of momentum again to the right, our initial momentum is exactly the same as before, 1500 times 4 plus m times 0 equals the final momentum, which is going to be 1500 times minus 0.8 plus m times 3. So this time we've got 6000 equals 3m minus 1200 which means that we've got 3m equals 7200 and m must be 2400. So the second possible mass for the truck D is 2400 kilograms. So we've seen that the mass of the truck D is either 1600 kilograms or 2,400 kilograms. Our final worked example is going to have T and F being two points at the top and bottom respectively of a 50 meter high tower with T directly above F. At the same instant an object A of mass 0.2 kilograms is released from rest at from the top of the tower and another object B of mass 0.4 kilograms is thrown vertically upwards from F with an initial speed of 20 meters per second. When the two objects collide they coalesce that means that they stick together to form a single particle. And we've got to find first of all the velocity of each object just before the collision We've got to then find the time that elapses from the very start of the motion to the moment when the combined object reaches the floor. And finally, we need to state two assumptions that have been made in answering the question. So, We've got our diagrams showing the initial stages of the motion. So at t equals 0, we've got A at the top of the tower and B at the bottom of the tower. A is at rest, but B is being projected upwards with speed 20 meters per second. At time t, little t, then we've got A has fallen distance xA and is now moving vertically downwards with speed VA and we've got B is moving upwards with speed VB and has moved upwards a distance XB. Using the constant acceleration equations S equals UT plus a half AT squared 
we can say that xa is 0 times t plus a half gt squared. So xa is simply a half gt squared. And xb is going to be 20t minus a half gt squared. Now the two objects will collide when xa plus xb equals 50 because that's the total distance between t and f. So that is a half gt squared plus 20t minus a half gt squared equals 50. In other words, 20t equals 50. So t is 2.5 seconds. Now, using v equals u plus a t, with t equals 2.5, we can find that, first of all, VA is 0 plus 2, um, G times 2.5. So VA is 24.5 meters per second downwards. And VB is going to be 20 minus GT, which is going to be a velocity of minus 4.5 in the upward direction. In other words, a downward velocity of 4.5 meters per second. The height of the combined particle at the instant of collision above the point F is given by XB and XB when t equals 2.5 is going to be 20 times 2.5 minus a half times G times 2.5 squared, in other words, 19.375 meters. So, we now know the velocities of A and B immediately before the collision. We want the velocity of the combined particle just after the collision, and we can apply the conservation of momentum downwards to obtain that. So the initial momentum downwards is going to be 0 0.2 times 24.5 plus 0 0.4 times 4.5 and that must equal the mass of the combined particle which is 0 0.6 times by W and that gives me W equals 67 divided by 60 in its exact form, or 1.12 meters per second, correct to three significant figures. Now, if we let capital T now signify the time to fall from the impact point down to F, then we can find capital T using the constant acceleration equation x equals ut plus a half at squared. We know the distance that's got to be fallen is 19.375 and that must equal 67 over 60 times t plus 4.9 t squared. So we've got a quadratic equation, 4.9t squared plus 67 over 60t minus 19.375 must equal 0. And if we solve that um, quadratic equation, the positive solution is t equals 1.878 seconds. And that is the time from the point where the two particles collide until they hit the floor. So the total time for the motion is going to be the 2.5 seconds of motion before the collision plus the 1.878 seconds after the collision. So we've got a total time of 4.378 seconds. Assumptions that we've made here, well, we've certainly assumed that the two objects are particles. We've certainly assumed that there's no air resistance and that we've got an instantaneous impact. Now, at this stage, it would be a good idea to pause the video and see whether you can have a go at these three questions.
And once you've had a go at those three questions, you've actually reached the end of this video.